Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the product rule and what this is going to help us do is finding derivatives of a function that's actually two functions multiplied together. But before we start talking about the product rule, we do need to talk about two functions in particular and that is sine and cosine. So when I look at the derivative of sine of x, and I'm actually going to pull up the derivative plotter that we talked about a couple weeks ago and by a couple weeks, oh, I think it was two weeks ago. And so this is the graph of sine of x. Again, it starts at a middle point and goes to a high. And if I take my derivative here, and the blue line is gonna be the actual tangent line, and the green line is the graph of the derivative. And we remember at the tops of um, curves, we have a zero on my derivative graph, and then it goes positive and negative depending on how my tangent line is oriented. So if I look here, my green graph is actually the graph of my derivative. And if you're just solely looking at that green graph, you can see that that is actually the graph of cosine of x because I start at a high and I go down to a low and I have the same period as that sine graph. And so we can say that the derivative dy dx, if we're looking for f prime of sine of x, etc., we know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. Now similarly, this is the graph of cosine x. We know that because it's starting at a high and going to a low. And here the green graph is my graph of my derivative. And if you notice, this is the graph of sine of x. However, instead of going from a middle up to a high point, it goes from a middle down to a low point. And so you can see that too if you look at your graph of cosine. And since that graph of cosine is going down in the beginning, that's what my derivative is reflecting. It's underneath the x-axis. And so my derivative of cosine x of that cosine function is going to be negative sine x. Okay, so those are just two, one, uh, two derivatives that you should just memorize because if I know the derivative of sine x, cosine x is gonna make my life a lot easier. So now let's talk about the product rule. This is what the product rule states. So if I have two functions that are multiplied together, so if I have f of x, well, I just totally messed up, f of x, and then I have g of x. Well, I can't trace that g very well. Okay, so I can write my function as a product of two things. This is how I'm gonna take my derivative. So if you notice here, you're gonna start with your regular first function. So you're just gonna take your first function and you're going to multiply it by the derivative of the second function, okay? And then the other one, you're gonna add the derivative of your first function and multiply it by the original second function. And that's kind of confusing to say it out loud, however, it's gonna kind of make sense in a second. It doesn't really matter if you put what order you write them in as long as you have one of your functions multiplied with the derivative of the other function plus the derivative of that second function times the first function or the second other function. Okay, so let's look here. On number one, I would be able to go ahead and I could foil out this thing and I could get a big long polynomial and then just do the power rule on each piece. However, that's gonna take me a little bit of time and so I'm going to go ahead and apply the product rule here. So if I look, I'm just gonna call my first function f of x and I'm gonna call my second function g of x. And so if I was going to take the derivative of f of x, that first part, you just do the chain rule to eat, not chain rule, the power rule to each part. So I would take down that first function or that first exponent is three times one is three and then x to the zero or nothing and then it's a constant, so nothing there, okay? Then I'm gonna take the derivative of my second function. And again, just gonna do my power rule, bring down that two exponent and subtract one and I have a constant, so it's just plus zero. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of plug into that formula that I have up there. So if I want to find the derivative of this function, f prime of x, I'm going to take my first function, and I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the second function, so g prime of x is what I wrote here. So I'm gonna multiply it by two x. Then I'm going to add my second function, just the way it was in the beginning, times the derivative of my first function, which we just said was just three. Okay, and now this is just going to be um, a process of doing a little bit of cleaning up. I would be really happy if you could get to this part, but if they did on multiple choice, keep going here, you just have to foil a little bit, so you'd have six uh, x squared minus four x plus and right here, a little bit more foil, 3x squared plus 6, and then I combine like terms, 
So my final answer would be 9x squared minus 4x plus 6. And so that's how you use the product rule. So let's do a couple more examples. So number two is definitely an example of one where I'd rather use the product rule instead of trying to do all of this crazy foiling because this is a three by three, it'd be giant. So they're actually asking me to find f prime of one. But my first step is I need to figure out what the derivative of this function is before I can plug one in. And a lot of times they are going to ask you to do something pretty simple like one or negative one. So when I look here, I'm gonna call this part my first function, f of x. And then I'm gonna call this part my second one, g of x. And I'm gonna do the same process. So I'm gonna find the derivative of just that first part. So again, power rule would say that my derivative would be 2x minus 1. And then for my derivative of my second part, that would just be 2 times 7 is 14x minus 2. And so now I'm going to apply that rule and I'm going to do f prime of x. Okay, so I'm going to take my first function just the way it is. And then I'm going to take f, or sorry, g prime of x, the derivative of the second. So 14x minus 2, and then I'm going to add my second function times the derivative of that first one. Okay, and you could FOIL and you could do some crazy stuff here, but because I'm just looking for the derivative at a point, I'm just going to go ahead and plug 1 in wherever I have an x, and that should make my life pretty easy. And again, if this was negative, you would definitely want to use parentheses just to make sure, but now this just becomes some straightforward arithmetic, if I can plug in one wherever I see an x. One, and again, I would just add up stuff that I could. So this first part is gonna be three times 14 minus two is 12. And then this other one right here, that would get me nine times one is just nine. And so now I know that my number answer for this would be 45. I'd have 36 plus 9. And again, that's just simple arithmetic instead of me having to go through and do crazy stuff. And for the most part, these type of questions will ask you for something like 1 or negative 1 or like 0. Something straightforward that wouldn't make you want to cry trying to square 24 or something. Okay. So there are also some cases where power rule is not as appropriate. So if I look at number 3, I keep saying power rule. I mean the product rule, there's too many p's going on. So I look here, this is definitely one function where we have 4x and then another function where I have cosine of x. And so again, if I remember to do my power rule, f prime of x is just going to be four times one is four and then no x is anymore. And then g prime of x, if you remember from the very beginning, the derivative of cosine of x is actually going to be negative sine x. And so I can just go through on here, I'm gonna use pink. So f prime of x is going to be my first function times the derivative of my second function, and I could have put my negative in the front, plus my second function times the derivative of my first one. And so again, I could rewrite this out a little bit just to make it look a little bit nicer but this is all I would expect you guys to get to and recognize. And so that would just be taking that derivative. But if I look at something like number four, this right here is not actually the product of two functions. This is just a number out here. And if you remember when I'm taking the derivative, I can just take that number and multiply it on the outside. Because if I was to go ahead and do it the long way with the product rule, I'd have f prime of x would just be zero because if I take the derivative of a constant number, that's just gonna get me zero. And then again, I'd have this um, negative sine x would be my g prime, I lost my prime here. But it would be a lot easier if I had just gone through and said, okay, well the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then I'm gonna multiply that by four. So you don't always have to use the product rule just because you see something times something. A constant number, you can just multiply on the outside of your function. Okay, finally, let's talk about this crazy notation that's going on down here. I have um, a function, f of x equals sine x, and I wanna find f prime of x, f double prime of x, 
f triple prime of x, and then finally the fourth derivative. And so this kind of blew my mind a little bit when I first learned about it. So this is a Roman numeral four. These guys can also be considered Roman numerals. So this is the first derivative, because there's one take mark, two, second derivative, three, third derivative, and then we start using Roman numerals. So just a fun fact. So if I want to find my first derivative, pretty straightforward, the derivative of sine is cosine of x. Okay, that was just like what we talked about in the beginning. Now if I want to find f double prime, or the second derivative of this, I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative of this function. So I'm going to take this cosine x, and I know that the derivative of cosine of x is a negative sine of x. Okay, and that's basically all you're doing here. You're just following this crazy pattern, keep going. So now for f triple prime of x, I'm going to go ahead and find this one, the third derivative. I'm going to find the derivative of the second derivative. Crazy stuff. And I know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine x, but then there's that negative one in the front. So that one would be negative cosine x. And then last but not least, let's find that fourth derivative, which again, you're just going to take the derivative of this guy. So this one's interesting because I would know that the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x, and negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm back where I started. So again, if they ask you to find the derivative, like a second or third derivative, you're just going to find the derivative of the derivative and just keep going until you need to stop. Okay, and that's all I've got for you. Re remember, product rule and know those sine and cosine derivatives.